Hey guys, and welcome to this arena playstyle guide for Frostmage. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a quick update on Azerite traits and changes to the default talent setup, as well as covering some of the best compositions you should be running. Finally, we're going to be covering general playstyle and goals in arena as a Frostmage. First up, let's start with Azerite traits. Blizzard are currently nerfing and buffing these consistently, so always make sure you keep up with the latest video for the current Azerite trait recommendations. Due to the recent buffs, these have changed since our Get Started guide. Frigid Grasp saw a 100% intellect buff, meaning this is now the go-to trait. You should look to stack this three times. Once you're at two or more, your PvP talent choice also changes, as it's recommended that you take Ice Form. Ice Form, you might be thinking, yes, this is strong not because of the stun immunity or the added frostbolt damage, but because of the Frigid Grasp Azerite trait. Ice Form gives you a buff for the same duration Icy Veins would, meaning you are going to have that huge intellect buff for 20 seconds every single Ice Form cast, which is a 1 minute cooldown compared to the 3 minutes of Icy Veins. Other changes from our Get Started guide are talent choices. Look now to always run Ebon Bolt as the increased burst and guaranteed proc on Brain Freeze help to burst with the added intellect provided by Frigid Grasp. Also remember to be swapping between Frigid Winds and Ring of Frost depending on the situation. For the final PvP talent, you should still look to always take Concentrated Coolness for the increased orb damage and placement, then swapping between either Kleptomania, Temporal Shield or Burst of Cold depending on the situation. If you are, however, unlucky and unable to obtain the Frigid Grasp Azerite trait, Tidal Surge, Whiteout and possibly Tunnel of Ice are all weaker but adequate substitutes, with the stat priority also still remaining to be Haste, Versatility, Critical Strike and then finally Mastery. Now that there is a meta beginning to establish, Mages have established themselves at the forefront of ranged DPS, having a vast amount of comps available to them. In this section we're going to be covering the top 3 compositions and having a brief rundown on how they play. First up is the ever staple of WoW Arena, Rogue Mage Priest, currently best played with an Assassination Rogue. This composition plays around swapping between targets based on defensive cooldowns and trinket usage, looking to score kills with crowd control on either healers or off targets while bursting down one target. Look to combine your Orb, Comet Storm and Ice Nova to secure kills on stun targets while making sure to land polymorphs onto either enemy healers or DPS when focusing on a healer. A weaker alternative that still works is replacing the priest with a druid, giving you a little extra crowd control but weaker survivability and less damage as you are losing the damage the priest provides as well as dark archangel. Up next is warrior, mage, healer. Played with either a fury or arms warrior and disc, druid or paladin. This composition plays similar to Rogue Mage, but swap out some burst for some more consistent damage from the Warrior. Looking again to score kills on DPS while crowd controlling the healer. Last up is an old comp that's seen a revival with Battle for Azeroth, and that's God Comp, which is Shadow Priest, Frost Mage, Resto Druid. This composition revolves around you and your Druid rotating CC onto the enemy healer, while combining your Psychic Horror, Frozen Orb, and Vortex to score a kill onto a target. Godcom also likes to extend games by abusing their spammable crowd control and slows to eventually whittle down their opponents scoring a kill in dampening. Now we know what compositions, traits and talents to be running, let's get into an arena breakdown for Frostmage. What makes them so strong? Frostmage has 4 main strengths in arena. Simplified, these are damage, crowd control, chitin and defensive play. In this video, we're going to be covering each objective and breaking it down and giving you some examples, as combining all these four strengths is key to mastering Frostmage in Arena. Frostmage is known for their burst damage and are often paired with a class that deals consistent damage. Frostmage likes to look for crowd control onto enemy healers, then combining that with bur the burst at their disposal. However, it's important to understand how to both burst and deal consistent damage as in some scenarios you'll be free to cast, so knowing how to deal consistent damage is still very important. Taking this into account, we're going to break this section down into burst damage and consistent damage. Mage's consistent damage is quite weak. It's made up of two spells, Frostbolt and Blizzard. 
These two spells deal very low damage, but the damage provided is not the main focus point around these two abilities. These abilities are Mage's filler for a reason, and that is that they both help you burst. Blizzard helps to speed up the process, as every time it deals damage, the cooldown on your orb will be reduced by 0.5 seconds. So in downtime when you are not bursting or waiting for diminishing returns, you should be making sure you always have Blizzard on top of the enemies. Once you have your Blizzard up, you should be Frostbolting, as Frostbolt gives you Icicles and Flurry procs, and storing these up before a potential burst window can help in securing the kill. As you see here, Zico has both his Frozen Orb and Ice Form on cooldown, and him and his team are not yet ready to burst. He is locked on Arcane and unable to peel, so spends this time preparing for his next burst window by getting his orb back faster with Blizzard and then Frostbolting to obtain Brain Freeze procs as well as Icicles. Burst damage is the reason Mage is so strong. Mage has some of, if not the strongest burst in the game. The abilities that make up Mage's burst are Frozen Orb, Comet Storm, Ebon Bolt, Ray of Frost, Ice Nova and Ice Lance. Your basic burst on every setup should look like this. You first want your target to ideally be locked down in a stun and crowd control onto the healer or third target. Then you're going to want to use your frozen orb into Comet Storm into Ice Nova, then using your fingers of frost procs on Ice Lance, combining this with your ice form. When bursting this way, all of your damage is instant. This results in you being unable to get interrupted during this window. When you have perfect crowd control or the enemy has no interrupts available to them, you can also burst using Ray of Frost and Ebon Bolt. For example here in this situation, the enemy hunter has no kick and the feral is locked down. Raikou chooses to burst using his Ebon Bolt, as there is no way he could possibly get interrupted. He casts his Ebon Bolt, then makes sure to follow up his crowd control on the healer before using his flurry proc to finish the druid. This is an important point, as it's almost always worth prioritizing crowd control over damage as a frost mage. Ray of Frost follows the same rules. You want to be using it whilst you're unable to be interrupted, as a full channel will result in some very strong damage as well as providing you with fingers of frost procs. Also seen here in this clip, Raikou gets all kicks out of the way, then lands a full channel of Ray of Frost, finishing the target off with the fingers of frost procs charges provided. Also, bear in mind your Ray of Frost and Ebon Bolt, like all of your spells, can be combined with Shimmer to blink away from potential kicks if required, guaranteeing that you land the cast, as seen here with Zico, perfectly demonstrating. He begins his Ray of Frost channel and blinks instantly behind the pillar, giving the mage no opportunity to counterspell, forcing the rogue's cloak in the process. It's also worth knowing that all of your burst abilities work with Shatter, so combining your Pet Nova or Frost Nova during burst windows can help increase your burst damage if you are not required to use them for chitin. Although you should always remember, mages have no consistent damage and only burst, so make the most out of your damage you should be combining it with crowd control, which brings us to our second key point. Mages are one of the few classes with an abundance of crowd control. They have roots, counterspell and a spammable crowd control in the form of polymorph. With such a huge amount of tools able to crowd control, Knowing how and when to combine these three tools to lock down your opponents is one of Mage's key strengths. The basic goal for a Mage is to land a Polymorph on a healer and then burst a DPS. This sounds easy, but with teams actively looking to stop you, it becomes quite the challenge. In this section we're going to be giving you some advanced tips high rated Mages use to help them land Polymorphs. The best way of doing this is why most Frost Mages team up with a DPS or healer who brings a stun or form of instant crowd control as landing polymorphs off your partner's instant CC is a surefire way of landing your crowd control, meaning that the healer is locked down. First up is the basic Shimmer Polymorph. With how Shimmer works, you are able to continue your cast while blinking. This means you can potentially land sheeps on healers positioned around the pillar, if used correctly, and take unsuspecting healers by surprise. But to consistently land polymorphs, you must first understand the concept of cross crowd control. This simplified means to crowd control the off target. So take this situation here. I'm going to circle Marrow. Marrow's goal here is to land a polymorph onto the enemy priest Chaz, who we can see here. But he also has premonition from the priest. 
counterspell from the mage and kick from the rogue to deal with. So how is he going to get this polymorph? First he locks the mage on polymorph using his own counterspell. This means the enemy mage is going to be unable to use his counterspell, taking that out of the equation. Now he only has kick and premonition to deal with. To help with this Maru gets some assistance from his rogue. Stunning the enemy priest to lock him down. This deals with premonition. Now all he has left is kick. He casts polymorph in conjunction with shimmer to get away from the rogue and land the polymorph onto the rogue. He then uses ring of frost onto the priest, essentially crowd controlling 3 players at one time and ensuring he lands the goal of crowd controlling the priest. Although this is an advanced tactic it follows a simple rule, you want to take out the enemy's interrupts from the equation so you can easily land your polymorph onto the healer. This can be done in a number of ways, whether it be polymorphing the DPS before landing it onto a healer, having your DPS assist with stuns, or simply following up your polymorph from other crowd control such as Psychic Scream. Counterspell can be used two ways, either as a tool to stop damage or as a way to create pressure. Counterspelling a healer is heavily reliant on the situation and matchup you are playing. You don't want to counterspell a priest in an RMP mirror for example, to then have them do the perfect setup, land in a polymorph then master spelling your block and ending you. So be careful when using counterspell for aggressive plays. Kiting is a huge part of Frostmage survival and knowing how to correctly kite against melee is key to avoiding damage and surviving. To kite as a Frostmage you have Frost Nova, Pet Nova, Cone of Cold and Blink as your main tools to assist but also have very strong passive slows provided by all of your frost abilities, so should be looking to avoid damage where possible. Here we can see Zico facing a warrior and enhance, two melee classes with limited mobility. He has to mainly keep track of the warrior's charge and heroic leap as these are his main tools to connect. Zico is keeping them both at bay by simply keeping up his strong slows while in turn building distance, making sure to keep up his slows via Cone of Cold and Blizzard and utilising both of his Novas. A great tip to assisting Kitan is to force your enemy team's mobility cooldowns without using your blink. You can do this via either slows or roots to build distance, then forcing them to use their mobility to catch up with you. Once they reach you, you just blink away and repeat the process. For example here, Zico has built enough distance from the warrior using his slows and roots at his disposal forcing the warrior to have to use his charge to catch up. He is then able to just simply blink away. In turn, the warrior uses his leap. Zico then just slows the warrior and continues to kite, forcing the warrior to use both his charge and his leap and still getting away. This leaves the warrior with no mobility left he's not going to be able to connect now for some time. On top of their ability to kite, mages also have a few other tools to stay alive. These are Temporal Shield, Ice Barrier, Ice Block and the defensive capabilities of both Polymorph and Counterspell. Temporal Shield should be used when you know you are going to be the target of some heavy damage. For example, you run out of mobility when kiting that melee cleave and they're about to have uptime onto you as seen here. Zico in this situation should be using his Temporal Shield. Instead he panics and trinkets, blinks away using his Temporal Shield after. This is an example of a bad Temporal Shield, he should have used this prior to the damage and gets no value out of it. Here in the same game Zico has run out of mobility again and both melee have connected onto him, similar to this first example. He adapted now from his previous mistake and this time instantly uses Temporal Shield, meaning whilst the double melee connect all damage is going to be negated a few seconds later via Temporal Shield. Ice Barrier is a great button to press to simply avoid some damage, there is no bad Ice Barrier as it's got a 25 second cooldown and lasts for a minute. Over the course of a game it will absorb a decent amount of damage so look to utilise the cooldown. Ice Block is your final form of defense, it's your panic button. When you have no mobility, no temporal shield and no way to escape, it's simply time to Ice Block. 
Ice Block has a 4 minute cooldown and lasts for up to 10 seconds. Although as a Frost Mage you have 2 of these thanks to Cold Snap, so after blocking always remember to Cold Snap. Polymorph is one of Mage's strongest defensive tools, as spamming Polymorphs onto DPS can help relieve pressure from either your team or you. Here in an RMP mirror the DPS are almost always the kill target, although when on the back foot and playing defensive it's often worth spamming Polymorphs to peel for your teammates, as seen here by Raikou. The enemy mage pops Icy Veins. Raikou then polymorphs him two times, then swaps it to the enemy rogue once the enemy priest uses his dispel. This helps keeping his team alive in a situation where they otherwise would have died, or forced to be using a lot of defensive cooldowns. Counterspell can be used offensively on healers to create pressure, although its best use is defensively either to prevent damage or to stop crowd control that your healer can't avoid. Always look to communicate with your healer and talk about what crowd control needs stopping. That just about wraps up this Frost Mage Arena playstyle guide. Thanks for watching and be sure to plus skill and leave a comment if you enjoyed.